Hey there! Welcome to a world of endless learning. This is today's quote. Have a happy learning. Have you ever wondered? Why we use electrical fuse instead of an iron rod, or how does a filament bulb glow? The answer is they both have a common property, which overcome our daily problem. By this property a bulb glows, or a fuse protect our electrical instrument from burning. We will discuss on this property. So stick to us. First we should know, what is a resistor? A resistor is an electrical component that limits or regulates the flow of electrical current in an electronic circuit. Resistors can also be used to provide a specific voltage for an active device such as a transistor. Two common resistor, schematic symbols are shown here. Number one symbol is an international symbol, and number two is an American symbol. The special property, we are talking about, that oppose electric flow of current is known as resistance. The unit of resistance is ohm, and sometimes, it is represented as the Greek uppercase letter, omega. The behavior of an ideal resistor is dictated by the relationship specified by Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the voltage V across a resistor is proportional to the current I, where the constant of proportionality is the resistance R. Resistors are paired together all the time in electronics, usually in either a series or parallel circuit. When resistors are combined in series or parallel, they create a total resistance, which can be calculated using one of two equations. Knowing how resistor values combine comes in handy if you need to create a specific resistor value. When connected in series resistor values simply add the values, as example, if you just have to have a 11.30 kilo ohm resistor, seek out some of the more common resistor values of 11 kilo ohm and 300 ohm, and butt them up together in series. Finding the resistance of resistors in parallel isn't quite so easy. The total resistance of n resistors in parallel is the inverse of the sum of all inverse resistances. This equation might make more sense than that last sentence. We can broadly classify resistors into three types. Carbon composition resistors CCR, consist of a solid cylindrical resistive element with embedded wire leads or metal end caps to which the lead wires are attached. The body of the resistor is protected with paint or plastic. Early 20th century carbon composition resistors had uninsulated bodies. The lead wires were wrapped around the ends of the resistance element rod and soldered. The completed resistor was painted for color coding of its value. The resistive element is made from a mixture of finely powdered carbon and an insulating material, usually ceramic. A resin holds the mixture together. The resistance is determined by the ratio of the fill material, the powdered ceramic, to the carbon. Higher concentrations of carbon, which is a good conductor, result in lower resistance. Carbon composition resistors were commonly used in the 1960s and earlier, but are not popular for general use now as other types of better specifications, such as tolerance, voltage dependence, and stress. A carbon pile resistor is made of a stack of carbon discs compressed between two metal contact plates. Adjusting the clamping pressure changes the resistance between the plates. These resistors are used when an adjustable load is required, for example in testing automotive batteries or radio transmitters. A carbon pile resistor can also be used as a speed control for small motors and household appliances. A carbon film is deposited on an insulating substrate, and a helix is cut in it to create a long, narrow resistive path. Varying shapes coupled with the resistivity of amorphous carbon can provide a wide range of resistance values. Carbon composition resistors can be printed directly onto printed circuit board substrates as part of the PCB manufacturing process. Although this technique is more common on hybrid PCB modules, it can also be used on standard fiberglass PCBs. Tolerances are typically quite large. 
A potentiometer or POT is a three-terminal resistor with a continuously adjustable tapping point controlled by rotation of a shaft or knob or by a linear slider. It is called a potentiometer because it can be connected as an adjustable voltage divider to provide a variable potential at the terminal connected to the tapping point. A volume control for an audio device is a common use of a potentiometer. Electronic analog computers used them in quantity for setting coefficients, and delayed sweep oscilloscopes of recent decades included one on their panels. A resistance decade box or resistor substitution box is a unit containing resistors of many values, with one or more mechanical switches which allow any one of various discrete resistances offered by the box to be dialed in. Usually the resistance is accurate to high precision, ranging from laboratory or calibration grade accuracy of 20 parts per million, to field grade at 1%. Inexpensive boxes with lesser accuracy are also available. All types offer a convenient way of selecting and quickly changing a resistance in laboratory, experimental and development work without needing to attach resistors one by one, or even stock each value. The range of resistance provided, the maximum resolution, and the accuracy characterize the box. For example, one box offers resistances from 0 to 100 megohms, maximum resolution 0.1 ohm, accuracy 0.1%. A resistor may have one or more fixed tapping points so that the resistance can be changed by moving the connecting wires to different terminals. Some wire-wound power resistors have a tapping point that can slide along the resistance element, allowing a larger or smaller part of the resistance to be used. Where continuous adjustment of the resistance value during operation of equipment is required, the sliding resistance tap can be connected to a knob accessible to an operator. Such a device is called a rheostat and has two terminals. A thermistor is a type of resistor whose resistance is dependent on temperature, more so than in standard resistors. Thermistors are widely used as in rush current limiter, temperature sensors, self-resetting over current protectors, and self-regulating heating elements. When a current flows through a thermistor, it will generate heat which will raise the temperature of the thermistor above that of its environment. If the thermistor is being used to measure the temperature of the environment, this electrical heating may introduce a significant error if a correction is not made. Alternatively, this effect itself can be exploited. It can, for example, make a sensitive airflow device employed in a sailplane rate of climb instrument, the electronic variometer, or serve as a timer for a relay as was formerly done in telephone exchanges. A photoresistor is a light-controlled variable resistor. The resistance of a photoresistor decreases with increasing incident light intensity. In other words, it exhibits photoconductivity. A photoresistor can be applied in light-sensitive detector circuits, and light and dark activated switching circuits. A photoresistor is made of a high-resistance semiconductor. In the dark, a photoresistor can have a resistance as high as several megohms. Magnetoresistors have a variable resistance which is dependent on the magnetic field strength. A magnetoresistor can be used to measure magnetic field presence, strength and direction. They are also known as magnetic dependent resistors. A magnetoresistor is a subfamily of magnetic field sensors or magnetometers. A varistor is an electronic component with an electrical resistance that varies with the applied voltage. It has a non-linear, non-ohmic current voltage characteristic that is similar to that of a diode. In contrast to a diode however, it has the same characteristic for both directions of traversing current. At low voltage it has a high electrical resistance which decreases as the voltage is raised. Varistors are used as control or compensation elements in circuits either to provide optimal operating conditions or to protect against excessive transient voltages. To find out the resistance of a carbon resistor, you should remember the given table. So please pause the video and note down the table.